What's going on guys, Taylor here, and I'm here to break down the brand new trailer for Persona 5. We finally have gameplay. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to be playing bits of the trailer, I'm going to rewind it, we're going to break it down, and we're going to uncover every little detail that we possibly can. So let's back this up a bit. So first of all, we've got this cityscape here, which clearly we're not needing by any more folks. This is big city, big metropolitan city, lots of lights, lots of color. And this helicopter is after somebody. So we zoom into this kind of casino uh, ballroom. Clearly, it's just a lot of people. There's a lot of uh, richness going on. Nobody's in the casino seat, so maybe there's some kind of hustle and bustle going on. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell where this is at. And we see somebody flash by. We've got these guys in suits maybe looking for him. And we've got somebody. Okay, so this says, will it result in glory? I believe is what this first part says. And then here we go. This is the main protagonist. If you've seen any of the preview footage, the initial trailer, this is the protagonist. This is what he looks like. It's the same hairstyle, same skin tone. He's just got a mask on. So he's playing a, looks to be a thief. So that first part said, will it be for glory or ruin? I think is what this part says. And so there we got our, we got the protagonist. He stole something or something's going on. And uh, now he is escaping. Red gloves, the main color for this game is red. So that, that plays a big part. And uh, there we go, the cops caught him, Peace Studio. Let's just look at this style here, guys. This game, this trailer is so slick and full of style. Look at this. Everything just flows so well together. It, it looks great and again, the, uh, the red color um, being a main part of it. Director, Katsuro Hashino. Did Persona 3 and 4, so great to have him back. Same thing with character designer Shigen... Shigenori Sojima. Same guy, same thing. Character designers for the last two Personas. And of course, Shoji Meguru, master composer. We're coming up on our first little bit of gameplay here. So masks, so here's what I'll, let's rewind that real quick. Masks seem to be a very big part of this game because leading up to it, it was called Night of the Phantom and everybody had masks on and clearly that was something that was a big part of it. So as this trailer goes along, I think you're going to see that um, masks are clearly a big part of maybe how we summon our personas in the game. We'll find out. So let's keep going here. Ah, so this is the first little glimpse we get of the velvet room here. So. It's not um, Margaret or Elizabeth. We've got these like two very diminutive um, twins, and it, you know, it started off as like a prison. You know, it opens up with these prison gates. Normally, the Velvet Room is sort of a place of refuge, right? You come and we've got Igor back. He's been in all the personas, him and his big dumb nose, right? But this looks to be like, are we going to be going to the Velvet Room as a punishment? Because it looks like the main character is a thief of some kind. Are we being punished for what we're doing? I'm not sure. So let's keep going here. Again, Igor. The Shibuya Crossing, uh, something that was shown in the, uh, the first real teaser of the game. So again, emphasizing the big metropolitan area. Um, not sure what this guy is, but showing the logo again. Super slick and stylish. Now we're gonna get our first bits of gameplay. Okay, look at this. Look at this gameplay. It looks, one thing I wanna say, um, we got the date in the corner, uh, April 11th, it's a Monday, and we're on this big train, very dense. One thing that, you know, Inaba, it was a very rural town, so there wasn't a lot of people, but this is, we have very dense, lots of people going on. And of course, uh, if you watched my most anticipated games of the year video, the one thing I was hoping for was it to look like Catherine, Clearly it looks like Catherine. So we've got that going on. Um, just very slick. Oh my gosh. I'm going to let this play and then I'm going to rewind it. And we're going to pick it apart. This is the first open area we've seen. So uh, look at the colors. Look at the style. Just look at everything that's going on here. He's got the character walking around. Tons and tons of people. It's dense with NPCs. Love it. It feels like it's a place it's being lived in you can tell that it's really busy and then I love this let's look at let's go over a little bit look at these businessmen here they're all slouched over they all look like they hate their lives they hate their jobs um, clearly a theme in the game uh, that you know the director talked about it's gonna be about breaking the shackles of society and kind of doing what we want moving forward with 
um, what we want to do. And clearly these guys don't look like they're doing what they want to do. And we've got our first scene of the classroom. So let's let that play a little bit. Getting head in the head with some chalk. <laughs> Falling asleep. Now the, the classroom scenes in Persona 3 and 4 are very static. Just, you know, a, a still image of the, of the teacher and uh, you'd answer some questions maybe. But this looks a little bit more involved. Like if there's animations of, you know, you're daydreaming and then the, the teacher will throw some chalk at you. I don't know. And then we've got the character, uh, which we'll meet in a second in front of him. He's got a, she's got a four leaf clover on her hood. I'm not sure if that's a reference to something, but um, there is that. So this is where we meet the first two uh, protagonist partners, if you will. So we've got this guy. Now they, later on, it's gonna break down the character's names. So I do have those names. So this guy right here, I'll fast forward a little bit so you can see him. Uh, he's on the ground right there, but his name is Ryuji Sakamoto. Uh, so the, later in the, it'll show menus, and that is the translated name of this character. So that is Ryuji Sakamoto, and then the girl um, on her pink phone, her name is Ann Takamaki. Um, there was there were varied varying uh, translations of that name. Some people said uh, Zura or Anzu or something, but it seems to be Ann seems to be the most agreed upon name. So Ann Takamaki. And again, just dense with style. I love that how it rips in like that. Uh, dense with NPCs, lots of people about. It, it seems just like a very busy city, very lived in. And then this this looks awesome. The clubhouse, very Catherine-esque, right? Kind of got that bar. This is maybe the hangout spot. And of course, here's our Teddy, our Koromaru, our uh, Igis of the game, this cat character. And later on again, it shows the name. This cat's name is Morgana. And I'm not sure if that makes it, makes it a female or a male uh, cat, but that is the cat's name. And again, just look at the detail. We've got chips, we got soda. Clearly this is a place they hang out. Maybe one of their parents owns this shop. Um, so this is like the Juness maybe of this game. This is the place they come and hang out, strategize, maybe talk about what they're gonna rob next because clearly they're thieves as we'll see more in this trailer. So let's go along a little bit more. Some slick little animations of the main characters. There's Ryuji rocking out and Anne spinning around ice skating or something. We've got Morgana. I love it. So stylish. Okay, the menus. The menus in this game are incredible. So I'll say this. Today, I work at a game company. I'm not going to say which company, but one of our programmers sent me this trailer and we were talking about it. He's like, the UI and the menus in this game are on another level. Those are his exact words, on another level. Now for a, a fellow designer to say something like that, man, I mean, clearly let's look, we're gonna let this play out a little bit cause it's amazing. Okay, so let's see here, we've got the, let's let this play a little bit. Let's look at that again. So we've got, we got skill, item, equip, persona, party, cooperation, seems to be a new thing. Mission, maybe that's a way to track side missions, requests, system. One thing I'm noticing, no social link. So I'm wondering if that got removed or something, I don't know. I guess we're gonna find out or maybe cooperation is social link. That was a very popular feature, so I'm not sure if that's gonna get removed or not. Oh, let's keep looking. Okay, here's another thing. Weapon and gun. Now, I never played the first two personas, but one thing a lot of people have been saying is that you had a gun in that one. You had two weapons. You had a weapon and your gun. Protector accessory clothes. This so maybe protector is your armor. Accessories like resistant to poison, do more damage, and then clothes is maybe how you look. So there's a lot of variety in how you can customize your characters, which seems really cool. And then I don't know what these are. Maybe these are the, the different weapons you have. I'm not sure. Then we've got this crazy possessed guy. Clearly he's possessed. Something's, go something's wrong with this guy. Disturbed in some way. Cra and then he crashes into the subway. Not sure how that's possible. All right, I'm gonna play this out and then we're gonna rewind it. All right, we're back. So we've got, so we've got the dungeon here. So he's diving through the door. Let's look at this now. In Persona 4, it was all hallways, it was all very basic, but this, this is a different level. It's very open, we've got enemies all over the place, it's not just a simple hallway. 
And then platforming, look at this. We got platforming, hopping from chandelier to chandelier. Looks multi-tiered, tons of detail on the ribbons, the roses and everything. It looks absolutely amazing. And then we've got this little stealth thing going on. So we're thieves. I'm wondering if there's gonna be, if this is like a mini game within the dungeon or what's going on. But another thing to note, still April 11th. This dude has kept busy today. There's clearly gonna be a lot to do in Persona 5. And then we've got what looks like another enemy. All right, again, let's let these menus play out because they're freaking amazing. Oh, so again, let's look at this menu again. So the character, there's actually a character on the table. Uh, looks like we've got a bear, some fish, an exoskeleton, or an x-ray of something. I don't know what this is. Um, this character never really shows up anywhere else, but when you talk to her for whatever it is you're talking to her for, she like becomes part of the menu, which is crazy. So Tay Takame? Takame? Medical clinic. Okay, so this is part of the medical clinic. Maybe this is where you go to heal up, something like that, where you would rest. These look like maybe potions on the, you can see HP worth 50, um, various amounts of yen. So maybe this is where you buy Takemi Medical Clinic. So maybe this is where you buy your potions and stuff. Another shot of the main character and Anne and Ryuji. And then here you can see they're, they have these thieve outfits that they're wearing and we'll see an in-game bit of footage coming up, but it looks, it looks really cool. They all have their own distinct outfits. Okay, this looks like a weapon shop of some kind. I can't read this Japanese, so I don't know. It says military shop, untouchable, Munahisa EY. The Joker, the fool. Maybe only certain people can buy certain items. Um, so, you know, they have the card, the tarot cards were part of Persona 4, uh, the Joker and whatnot. So maybe that plays a part as well. Now here's an interesting, you're in jail. And it's being guarded, if you, we can see real quick, by those twin uh, Velvet Room girls. And there's the main character clearly in jail. So maybe the Velvet Room, again, is part of some sort of prison system. We, we saw that earlier with uh, Igor. Is right before you see him, the, the prison doors open up. So I'm wondering if imprisonment has something to do with it. Or are you getting punished for the, the evil deeds you do as a thief? Okay, here we go. Look at this. So we've got HP, SP on the bottom. All our characters. We've got our mask on. He's got a gun. And here's something I want to try to get um, a shot of this. So right there, we've got Sandman and Pyrojack. So now these are staple personas. We're not fighting with them, we're, we are attacking them. So I'm wondering if you have to fight them to gain them, kind of like in classic Final Fantasy with summons, you have to defeat them to get them on your team maybe, I don't know. Um, but we're, yeah, we're doing some damage here. Slow down of uh, Anne there and we got Ryuji. Morgana, and then here we go. All out attack, again, so that's classic persona right here, this shot, amazing. Everybody's got their style going on. They almost look a little evil, especially look at Ryuji and the protagonist, they look kind of evil. And then Anne's looking a little, you know, silly, sinister. <laughs> Morgana's interesting. All out attack looking super slick and stylish. And then here we go, skating a little bit on some ice, just Again, very stylish and slick. Loving the song, very, very cool. And there we go, Persona. Presented by Atlas. And then there's one little bit at the very end. I'll, I'll watch it and then we'll break it down. Okay, so there's a couple things to point out here. One, his, his face is bloody like he's been wearing a mask, so Clearly, the, the prevailing theory going around the internet is that you have to use your mask to summon your persona, but then let's break down what happens here. So the, the blood goes away, he seems to get a new mask, and then he gets enveloped in his flames, his eyes are getting real crazy, and then they get even crazier. And it, So the theory going around is that maybe you put on your mask and you become the persona, you don't summon them, you like turn into it. Because li listen to this noise at the very end here. Right. That glass breaking sound. That is the sound it makes in Persona 4. 
when you summon your persona. So I'm thinking you transform into your persona. That's when that sounds that that glass break is going on. So that is pretty much it. We got Persona 5. We got the website if you want to learn more. But that is pretty much it, guys. Persona 5, the gameplay trailer. I'll just kind of let this play out. I'm super excited. This looks absolutely incredible. Super slick and stylish. Dense areas. Looks like Catherine. Really what I was hoping for. No release date, though. Um, no release window even outside of 2015, but they didn't even say that in this trailer, so I'm wondering if it's going to get pushed. Um, but I was uh, reading some interviews from the director today, right here, Katsuro Hashino, and he was saying how, um, you know, it's all about breaking free. Uh, again, uh, a lot of the, the NPCs look like they're just hating their life, and so these guys are sort of like vigilante thieves trying to get what they want out of life and so maybe that how that's how you interact with the velvet room you're getting captured you maybe they capture you to do good because there's other forces out there that are even worse than you i'm not sure um but either way guys easily easily my most anticipated game even still leapfrogging final fantasy 15 i think i'm super pumped i can't wait to see where the characters in the game how the flow is going to be and just more of the story so definitely leave your comments below and we'll talk all about this i'm sure we'll there'll be even more things to talk about in the coming weeks of persona 5 so anyways guys thanks for watching stay awesome